What we will be doing in this video is showing you how to download and install Qt4 Device Creation with the options that you want. In this case we will be going for the main compiler and all the modules available for the latest Qt5.15 version at the time of this recording, as this is the latest long term supported release. Additionally we will install the image and toolchain for the Toradats Apalis IMX6 boot Qt software stack. First we go to the Qt account which is at https account.qt.io and log in with your email and password. When logged in you have access to the, your license information and can also create a support ticket. But we will focus on downloading and installing Qt in this video. Click on download and then make sure that Qt online installer is selected in the list of products. You may find it is already done for you. Then click on download. Since the online installer does not contain anything but the means to access the online service to download and install Qt from them, this should only take a minute at the most. Once the installer is downloaded, we need to change the permissions for it. So bring up Terminal and then go to where you have downloaded it to. That we need to do now is called chermod plus x on the installer file so that we can run it. Now that is done, we can start the installer from here as we are here already. The first page you get will ask you to log in to your Qt account. Fill in the fields using the same email and password as before and click on next. As you have a commercial Qt license, then it will say welcome to commercial Qt setup. If you are not seeing this, then please open a support request and we will rectify that for you. Now click on next. This will quickly download the metadata needed to know what Qt versions and other products that you have asked to. The next page is about whether you want to send user statistics and Qt Creator to the Qt company or not. I will personally select yes for this and click on next. Now you can choose the directory that Qt should be installed into. You can change this to what you want, but I will keep the default in my case. The easiest option next is to select the default Qt 5.15 desktop installation. What this does is installs the latest version of Qt 5.15 for the main compiler for the desktop. This also includes all the optional modules that comprise part of that version of Qt 2. This will also include the latest version of Qt Creator for you. You can also choose the default Qt 6 desktop installation if you want to use the very latest Qt version available to you. If you are starting off completely fresh and don't have a preference about the Qt version being used, then Qt 5.15 is the one to use as this is the latest long term supported version of Qt and has all the modules available to you. Should you want to have more control over what is installed, then select the custom installation. In order to show you this part, I will choose this to select the same things that the default version would pick. Now click on next. What you have here is a list of everything you have access to, broken down into four different groups. I will not go into detail about each one, but I will briefly explain them. Archive is a list of all of the older Qt versions, ones which are no longer supported, or ones that have been since replaced by a newer version in the same range such as Qt 5.15.1 now that Qt 5.15.2 has come out. Note that this list will change depending on when you install. LTS is a list of just the latest long term supported versions of Qt that are supported currently. Latest releases are the latest releases of any supported version of Qt, so this will also include the non long term supported versions too. Lastly, Preview is for those releases which are currently in beta and release candidate stages. What we will do now is install Qt 5.15.2 for the GCC compiler. First expand the Qt entry and then Qt 5.15.2 and you can see all the possible options. This lists all of the platforms that you have available and which can be used from the desktop you are installing on. So on Linux you can, assuming you have a license for it, install the pre-built versions of Qt for WebAssembly and Android as well as Linux Desktop. Click on the box next to Desktop GCC 64-bit to choose the pre-built version of Qt for that version. And since we want to make sure we have all the extra modules, put a tick next to all of the ones listed.
Now we are ready to install our device image and tool chain. So we scroll down to Qt4 device creation and expand that entry. Expand the boot to, to Qt software stack 5.15.2 and this will list the targets you can directly download via the online installer. There are other images available as separate downloadable QBSB files, but we will not cover that in this video. Since we want all of the components available for the Toradets, Appellets, IMS sits, we can tick the box next to that. Now we are ready to go through the final steps, so click on Next. The next page is the license agreement. As I am already aware of the contents here, I can click on the button next to I have read and agree to the terms contained in the license agreements. Now we can click on Next. Now we are ready to install. All I need to do is click on Install, then it will install everything for you. As this will take a bit of time, then we will cut the video here and skip to the page after this is finished installing. Now that the installation is finished, all that remains to be done is to click on Finish and Qt Creator will start for you, and you will be ready to start working on your application. If you ran into any problems along the way, then please open the support request via the support centre and our support team will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching.